I wanted to take 17th century pieces of music um, and perform them in a very straight way, but then loosen everything up and just say, okay, let's take the, the wonderful mediums that we have of pop, of jazz, of world music, of um, just folk music, just easy listening music or really hard hitting music and just completely liberate it. I said, okay, let's look at a popular music of the of the 50s, of the 60s, and of the 70s. See how that can influence music from the 17th century that we do. Break down all the barriers. Really open up our, you know, let's go for surprise. Let's surprise ourselves. Let's see how music can inspire us in different ways, from different cultures, from different places, from different sounds. Minna is one of the most spectacular singers I've come across in the last few years. She has a beautiful, angelic, pure voice. What's wonderful about Minna is that she's she's got a kind of toughness and she's got a spark. <laughs> Well, this project came about after some wonderful work with the Brandenburg Choir, with Paul, and really loved that because I've grown up being a choral singer, but of course loved doing a lot of folky sort of music, jazz or folk-based improvised music. And when he called it tapas, I love tapas. I love Spanish food. So I was very excited by the title, and when I asked him about it, he explained it and said it was just, you know, little tastes of all these wonderful um, musical items with fantastic musicians. So I was sold, very excited to be involved, and be allowed to improvise and go a bit crazy. In my direction for Tapas, I was able to say to Mina at any stage, just open the sound here or close the sound there. I was able to say to her, come on, we want a really uh, particular type of atmosphere here or a particular type of sound, or we want to explore the moods right here. And Mina was always someone who just came to the party. <laughs> Coming from a classical background, having the classical technique is very helpful because it allows you to do all that beautiful dynamic range and support your sound. But what was exciting about this project was exploring chest voice and breathy sounds and you know making you crescendo, decrescendo, doing all sorts of things to your voice and just playing and experimenting. The musicians who are performing on this Tapas CD uh, all soloists within the orchestra. And what I decided to do was take groups of, of different uh, musicians, whether they be keyboard instruments, whether they be string instruments or percussion instruments, uh, and just to allow them to have creative freedom and uh, use that freedom and give them an the opportunity to take risks within the music too to just find the juice within the music or find your own spirit or find a connection with the audience or find a new way of exploring something. Tapas was also a chance to meld and blend the beautiful sounds of the percussion instruments that we have. Um, I asked the boys who played percussion on the CD whether I could have 21 different sounding instruments. We've got a really interesting instrument on this Tapas CD. It's called the Lirone. Lirone is a 17th century string instrument. It's in the shape of a cello, but it has 14 strings on it. There's only one in the country, uh, and it's modelled on an instrument that unfortunately didn't survive the Second World War. Paul Dyer is a very playful, fun um, kind of musician, so I think if you have been to any kind of concerts with Brandenburg, no matter what the repertoire is, he just has a great connection with the audience and loves putting the audience in a, in a very relaxed sort of state and explaining where he's coming from. 